intro for episode five this is it you clicked on it you're watching it so that's the intro in this episode unlike all my other ones for this build if you guys haven't already go back to my channel click on the playlist click on the off-road gas to electric go-kart conversion playlist and watch all the other episodes before you watch this episode just so you're in the loop otherwise you can just watch this episode if you want to know what kind of electric motor you would want to put into a go-kart are not going to show the go-kart actually I'll show you guys the go-kart so you know what go-kart I'm putting this electric setup into this is the go-kart it's a mini off-road go-kart it started off as a TY rod 4 and I did a full front suspension and I modified the rear suspension it's got crazy suspension pretty cool but we took off a gas 5.5 horsepower motor and we're gonna replace it with this brushless DC motor it's equivalent to a 6.7 horse but everything on this table is what we're going to use to power this go-kart this motor is water cooled so we're gonna have a water cooling system with hoses I am going to take you step by step on how to actually wire this all up. We are going to have the throttle working, moving the motor, and the water pump circulating water through the reservoir, radiator, and motor, all in this video, all on the bench. This way you know how to do it on pretty much any go-kart you want to put it on. So without further ado, let's start breaking everything down on this table step by step, and I am going to put the links in the description below of everything so if you want to buy this stuff everything will be down below maybe not the link to the battery because i took this battery out of my ebw80 which is an electric dirt bike that i built you can even go watch those videos if you want back on my channel that's a cool build the thing is sick but it's a 72 volt battery this is a 72 volt system i am going to explain a lot more Basically, this whole video is going to be me explaining everything we got here, and let's just start hooking things up. So let's start off with the motor. So for a motor, what we got here is a 5KW golden motor. I guess the serial number would be HPM05KL. And it's a brushless DC water-cooled electric motor. It's got a rated power of 3kW to 7kW. So, this thing is pretty big. It's pretty heavy duty. It feels solid. It's heavy. And the reason why I chose the water cooled motor over the fan cooled motor was I feel like in an off road application, the fan cool is going to let rocks and dust get into the motor itself. Just I don't think it's too healthy for it. So the water cooled motor looks like it's pretty well sealed off on both ends. So it looks like it's a lot more durable. The only thing I don't like about the water cooling system that they give you with this motor stock is these are the fittings for the water cooling hoses. I guess they expect you to cool this thing off with little quarter inch hoses that just push into that this is very thin I don't see much water really flowing through all this so I would imagine this will do the job but we are going to upgrade all this I'll show you as we progress in this video of what I'm really going to use but this is the motor if you guys want to see a little size comparison of how big this thing is versus everyday objects here's a couple things just off the top of my head so here's the motor up against a Gatorade bottle. Now, here's the motor up against a milk jug. So that gives you a pretty rough idea of the height is a little bit shorter than a milk jug, maybe just underneath the cap and the thickness of the motor is equal to about a milk jug so it's definitely way heavier than a milk jug filled so it's a big motor it's pretty heavy it's pretty hefty 
I think it's going to do a pretty good job for powering the go-kart. But more important than the motor is going to be the speed control. And for speed control, we also got a Golden Motors Vector VEC300. I am running the motor and speed control off 72 volts, like I said earlier on in the video. So everything is 72 volt, but they do make the motor and speed controller in a 48 or 96 volt setup. So this thing has a rated current of 30 to 200 amps. And yeah, this also feels very heavy and heavy duty. I think mainly because of this massive aluminum plate that is solid on the bottom of the controller, I guess to act as a giant heat sink. And for the plugs coming out of this thing, it's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. They labeled everything, there's a cruise control. This is gonna be our main power. This is where you would hook a switch on and off to. This little loop is going to go to our positive on the battery. I'll explain more when I start hooking it all up. This is for the hall sensor, the motor. This is gonna be our throttle. In our case, we are gonna use a foot throttle. The brakes, it's basically an on off switch. So when you hit the brakes, the motor doesn't keep turning. I don't have a switch for that just yet. Actually, I do have a switch for that, but we might not hook it up in this video. And last but not least, the reverse. I do not have a switch for this one. I am gonna have to get a switch for the reverse because that is a nice feature with these brushless DC motors that it's very easy to hook a reverse to it. So these are where our three wires from the motor go to. These are your two battery leads, your positive, your negative. And uh, that's pretty much it for the speed control. So let's move on to the next thing, which would be our foot throttle. Now, this is some Chinese thing. I don't really know too much about it, except for it was made in 2018 and we're in 2019. That's all I know about it, but it's got three wires. I think it's gonna work. I think it's a, I, I don't know. I don't know too much about this thing, but this is the foot throttle. <laughs> To cool our liquid cooled motor, these are the pieces you're going to need. You're going to need a water pump to circulate the water through the system. And what I got here is a Swift Tech 12 volt DC water pump. Now, this is for a PC, so it's meant to be mounted to a desktop and not move and just circulate water in a stationary computer. Actually, everything here. For the cooling system except for the motor came from micro center so everything here is meant for a computer and i'm not using it for a computer i'm going to use it in the go-kart so time is going to tell if these things are going to hold up but i figured it's low profile it's pretty cool it runs off 12 volts i can run this off a little lipo battery from one of my rc cars external from the go-kart because the go-kart is going to run 72 volts so this is just going to be its own little circuit just going to run the water pump it's going to control my cooling system so that's the swift tech water pump that I chose. This is a EKWB Res X3 reservoir. The point of running the reservoir is to fill the system with water. So you're going to open this cap, fill this with water, and it'll fill the whole system. This is going to be our highest point when we mount all this on the go kart. I'll explain all that when we mount this to the go kart. Here's the radiator I'm going to use. It's a single fan radiator. It's probably not big enough to cool the system, but it should help as far as dissipating some of the heat. But the big upgrade is the hoses I'm going to use. Now, if you remember from before, when you buy this golden motor, they're going to give you these little shark press fittings and this tiny little quarter inch see-through hose. It simply goes like that. What I'm going to do is upgrade it. So instead of using this little hose, I'm going to use this 3 8 hose. So you see the difference? It's pretty huge. So this thing is garbage for all I care for. And what I'm going to do is unscrew these things and simply replace them with these fittings that you can buy 
which you're going to need to buy. Here's a, the part number for the fitting. It's a G quarter inch, 3 eighths fitting. And it fits directly onto this golden motor. So you see that? So now we're able to put our big hose for a massive amount of water cooling flow, I should say. That's what this pump is meant for. So let's hook up the coolant system to the motor and then we'll worry about hooking up the electronics. So let's just get to it. This mount is right here. All right, so now we're gonna fill the whole system with water. Let's see how this goes. Gotta bleed the air out of all the cavities. Okay, so let's try putting power to the pump and seeing what it does. And as you can see, we have movement in our reservoir. And that's because our water pump is doing its job of pushing the water through the hoses, through the radiator, through the motor, back into the reservoir. And it's just doing that over and over again. So this is basically our water cooling system. Now this, that's going to be mounted somewhere underneath the steering wheel of the go-kart. Up front, nice and safe so rocks don't hit it. I'm going to mount these up in the front of the go-kart too and our motor. So now let's work on the electronics of the motor itself. Now that we know that this system is a working cooling system. So let's do electronics now. All right, so now that you just saw how the whole water system works, let's actually do the electronic part of this system. So we are going to do a very crude version of it. So we are not going to use the reverse the brake or the cruise control. We will deal with these at a later point, but the ones we're gonna use, you're gonna look for the E-lock, which is basically your key. 
the throttle, which are your three wires. And this is for your hall sensor for the motor. So let's start off by plugging in the hall sensor. It only can go in one way, clips right in. Now let's hook up the three phase wires from our motor. Now they give you a U, a V, and a W. I have no idea what that stands for. I don't know what that means, but all I do know is it's the W is the blue. The V is the green. And the U is the yellow. Okay, so hole sensor, three wires, looks like this. Now, let's worry about the E-lock. The E-lock is the on-off key. It's going to give power to turn on to speed control. So we're going to want to go to the back side of the fuse. So this is the side of the fuse that's powering The controller is also passing the current through to go to the motor from the battery, so that's the side we want to go to. And you want to go to this side of the fuse because say anything happens, like the battery shorts or something, the fuse will pop and not ruin anything on this side of the fuse. So e locks on that side of the fuse, simple enough. For our battery. When you're working with these kind of batteries, guys, remember to take the fuse out of the positive cable just so you don't accidentally touch them and they spark. But with the fuse out, we're going to put our negative on the B minus side. So B minus is the negative. And we're going to put the positive on the B plus side, which is the other side of the fuse. So this is going to be our positive. So the only thing we have left now well, actually, we got two things left, but let's hook up our throttle, which are these three wires. Let's relieve some more wire. So this will plug right into your throttle plug, just like so. So we got everything hooked up. We need to put the fuse in the battery. Which, where did I put the fuse? So now let's take our fuse, put the fuse in the battery. A little sparks okay. And let's take our jumper wire and we're gonna put it in the E lock, which is the key. So this is acting as a key. And we should get a red light and a beep. Oops. Yeah, so when that thing turns on and you get that beep, that means the system is powered up and it's good to go. 
So one beep means you're good. If you get multiple beep guys, that means you have something wrong with the system. But if you get that one beep and that light, that means you're good. So let's give some throttle. Look at that. Guys, it doesn't get any easier than that. That's how simple it is to hook this up, so. Just like that, it all works. Ready. Set. Ding, 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 ding. All right, so now that you guys seen us hook up the whole electrical system, you're seeing the entire water cooling system. You basically seen everything that we need to finish this go-kart electronically drive wise. So that's gonna be a wrap to this video. We are in like the 20 minute mark and if you guys stuck through from the beginning to the end, I appreciate it so much. So please subscribe if you wanna see more of this stuff. Stay tuned, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you want a more detail or if you have any suggestions or anything that has anything to do with these builds. Just write in the comments below. Let me know what you guys are thinking. And I'll just see you guys on the next one because in the next video we are going to be putting all the stuff that you just watched in the go-kart. So we're going to have a working driving go-kart hopefully real soon. So thanks and I'll see you guys real soon on the next one. Peace.